May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It's the story of the president of a homeowners association who ruled with a tight fist. Some say he earned it though. For nearly 15 years, his energy plan helped the residents save money on their summer electricity bills. Each household was responsible for setting up their own lightning bug or firefly lanterns that provided night light on their streets during the summer. They would have otherwise had to pay big bucks to Georgia Power to install street lights. Most people participated with joy. They enjoyed the benefits and the activity of collecting these lightning bugs. The president set it up so that everyone agreed to give him five extra lightning bugs each night as part of the HOA fee. That way, the president never had to go out and catch any himself, and he had plenty to light his backyard for the wild parties he had every weekend. Now, from time to time, a person or two neglected or refused to participate in this, doing their part, and the lightning bug lantern stood empty at the curbside. One man who lived there for about three years continued to fall behind owing the president of the association 10,000 lightning bugs. The president became angry and threatened to expel him and his, his family from the neighborhood. Now the man and his wife worked hard and waited for years to move into this elite neighborhood that was frequently featured on HGTV's curb appeal because of the lightning bug lanterns. They couldn't afford to start all over. So the man said that there was no way though that he could catch up three years worth of lightning bugs, no way. He begged for lightning bug forgiveness and promised that he would start participating the very next night. The president took a deep breath and decided to wipe the slate clean. The man felt relief, but just for a little while, he came across his neighbor who owed him a two ounce bottle of hand sanitizer. He grabbed the guy by the throat and he said, pay me what you owe me. I need that hand sanitizer to clean off that odor that the lightning bugs leave behind after I catch them. I saw that Amazon Prime driver leaving your house the other day. You have money, pay me. And the man said, no, I don't have any, I don't have money for this. There's no hand sanitizer available in the stores, but once there is, I'll pay you back, I promise. But the man refused to extend mercy. Instead, he put a sign in his neighbor's yard that said, lying loser. Now, the neighbors all saw this and they became quite distressed because they knew what it meant for the president of HOA to extend such forgiveness of a huge debt, 10,000 lightning bugs to this man. So they went to the HOA president and to tell him what happened. And the president was furious. You wicked man, he said, I forgave you all of your debt, so many lightning bugs and you refuse to extend grace to your fellow neighbor. He took a photo of the man and wrote a brief synopsis of what happened and shamed him by posting it on the next door app. Several neighbors in the community expressed their disbelief and vowed to shun the man. How dare he not extend grace to his neighbor? forgiveness as he had been forgiven. Now, I know this is an outrageous story, but the story, the allegory included in the gospel reading is equally outrageous. It would have been so in first century Palestine, 10,000 talents was an exorbitant amount that no way could anyone 
possibly owe that to another person. But Jesus uses this extremity to, as an example, in response to Peter's question, how many times should I forgive someone? Seven times? And Jesus says, no, 77 times. Forgiveness. June 26 was Forgiveness Day. July 7th, Global Forgiveness Day. And August 2nd, International Forgiveness Day. The expectation of forgiveness, seeking forgiveness, extending forgiveness, receiving it, is woven in all major religions. In our denomination, we have a Eucharist. And with the exception of Eastertide, we pray a confession. We confess what we have done and not done. We confess to be truly sorry and humbly repent. Absolution is granted. And then as a reminder, we say the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now let's face it. Forgiveness is not always easy. Forgiveness is closely tied with relationships. Often love and trust has been extended, vulnerability laid open, and most likely reciprocity. But then something happens. A violation of trust occurs. Lies, infidelity, broken promises, abuse. The perpetrator may say, I'm sorry, or maybe not. Nonetheless, we are left wounded. Some offenses are so egregious that forgiveness may seem utterly impossible and left only to God. Sometimes forgiveness is tied to reconciliation, leaving one to think a relationship must be restored if there is true forgiveness. Forgiveness can come over time and we may never forget. And because we may not be able to forget, we shouldn't focus on reconciliation, the restoration of a relationship as a true sign of forgiveness. Because whenever something is breached, there's a wound, there's mistrust. Even if people decide to work on the relationship, it's not the same as it was before and it takes time to heal the wounds. But it takes both parties having effort and desire to come back together in a way that will be new. Today's gospel reminds us that God forgives us and we are asked to do the same amongst ourselves. As people of faith, as a community, as people moving about in the world, we we'll reform relationships with people intimate relationships, friendly relationships, the relationships that are extended just explicitly that we have, understanding that sometimes things can go wrong. Replicating the cycle of divinity, God's forgiveness extended to us, and we extending forgiveness to others is what helps us to maintain a holy balance in the world. There's an African proverb that states, one who forgives ends the struggle. One who forgives ends the struggle. Rabbi Harold Kushner shared this story. He wrote, a woman in my congregation comes to see me. She is a single mother, divorced, working to support herself and three young children. She says, since my husband walked out on us, every month is a struggle to pay our bills. I have to tell my kids there is no money to go to the movies while he's living it up with his new wife in another state. How can you tell me to forgive him? The rabbi answered, I'm not asking you to forgive him because what he did is acceptable. It wasn't, it was mean and selfish. I'm asking you to forgive him because he doesn't deserve 
the power to live in your head and turn you into a bitter and angry woman. He doesn't deserve the power to live in your head. I'd like him, I'd like to see him out of your life, out of your life emotionally, as completely as he is out of it physically. But you keep holding on to him. You're not hurting him by holding on to resentment, but you're hurting yourself. Hurting yourself. Too often we find ourselves holding on to something and the other person has moved on. Several years ago, I was part of a team. It was called a ministry called Residence Encounter Christ. And it took a form of Curcio, which is a, a movement that focuses on Christianity and lay leadership. So we uh, brought this, we, our team brought this uh, ministry opportunity into Pee Wee Valley, Kentucky's women's prison. It went from Thursday to Sunday. We stayed in hotels, in and out. And part of uh, Residence Encounter Christ, as well as Trucio, includes a time for testimony. So late one night, one of the inmates stood up to give her testimony. She talked about the mistakes that she had made being involved with a man who was selling drugs and and that's how she ended up there. But she, she said that before she was caught and convicted and found herself serving a sentence, she lied that her best friend had been involved in drug deals. And she wished she hadn't done that. And so she'd been carrying that burden with her for several years. And she'd not had a chance to say, I'm sorry, would you forgive me? Well, as God works things out, this woman, the friend that she betrayed, was in this same prison. She was on the other side of the room. And so at the end of this one woman's testimony, the other woman stood up and she walked toward her with tears streaming down her face. And she said, I have forgiven you. Years ago, I forgave you but you never knew it, never knew it. And the two embraced and there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Forgiveness granted, but no way to receive it. Forgiveness extended, then at last, at the right moment, at the right time, received by the one who had been offended and incarcerated. Sometimes forgiveness involves forgiving ourselves as well as someone else. The Spirit of God serves as a bridge that weaves together like a triangle, almost like the Trinity, well, like the Trinity, God, ourselves, and someone else. So we count on God's grace and love to bind us together, to work towards forgiveness. And again, I know that there are some things that you may have experienced that is just too hard to forgive. And it may be a lifelong burden, but know that God so wants you to be healed. God wants you to be free of that burden like a bomb in Gilead that heals the wounded soul. God wants that for you. And we pray that that will happen. Forgiveness heals the cracks in our heart to extend and accept it. Even though it's difficult, we try. Sometimes it can be made and sometimes it can't but it's part of who we are as followers of Christ. Forgiveness helps us to better manage our life in the world with other people because we know that we will be hurt and we know that we will hurt others. 
But thanks be to God, we have a God who extends forgiveness and heals, if not in this life, in the next life to come. Amen.